Somebody's gotta make them pay. Welcome to another exciting episode from Marvelous Videos. I'm your host, Tia Ayer. Casey Jones Origins TMNT. With his hockey mask, self made weapons, bike, and a thirst to avenge, Casey Jones is one of the most recognizable and popular characters from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise. Brought along a friend. Yo, uh, Casey. <laughs> Casey Jones. There is no doubt that he is one of the angriest characters that you will ever come across, but it all trails back to his origin story, which explains largely why he is the way he is. His origins will be talked about in the video, but along with that we will also be discussing his first appearance on television, along with IDW Comics' take on his character. Casey Jones is an important asset to the Ninja Turtles and has always helped the Mighty Turtles in every way that he possibly could, but that wasn't how his journey began. Sit back and relax as we take you through the roller coaster ride of Casey Jones' story, while also uncovering some interesting facts about your favorite character. Let's begin. Shall we? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Not even mutant criminals can stop Casey Jones. The first time on television, TMNT 1987. In the classic animated series, which was released in the year 1987, Casey Jones only plays a minor role, appearing in a total of five episodes. There is a point where the audience sees his blue boxers in this show but never his face as he keeps it hidden behind a mask at all times. This version of Casey Jones is very different from what the fans have been seeing in the shows and comics that followed. Furthermore, his friendship with Raphael is non-existent in the 1987 show, but he is still someone that Ninja Turtles can count on whenever they need his help. Casey is portrayed as a hothead and someone ready to punish any evildoer with all of his might. It is also important to note that this version of Casey and April O'Neil had no significant relationship and they didn't even meet each other until season 5, but they ultimately team up once in season 7 and then again in season 8. Casey Jones is going after the big boss man. In Casey's final appearance in the 1987 series, he duels the Shredder and can evenly match his strength after being able to wield a mighty weapon, a sword. Notably, this is the only interpretation of Casey Jones that can wield a weapon. Casey's character has added to the 1987 series on a special request by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird, who were both popular co-creators of the comic book. Although Casey was an essential character in this cartoon series, he still made an impact by avenging and punishing those he could, and often nicknaming the villains Scuzz Buckets and Lawbreakers. The 2003 Remake TMNT 2003 Season 1 Episode 4 titled Meet Casey Jones dives into the beloved character's origin story and helps the viewers know more about him than the 1987 series did. The episode begins with the Ninja Turtles in their lair, Michelangelo trying to rile Raphael up, throwing punches his way and dodging anything that Raphael throws at him. We catch a glimpse of just how much anger is built up in Raphael when he eventually had to be stopped and snapped out of it before he caused severe harm to Michelangelo. Splinter then explains that Rage is a true monster that will destroy Raphael from within if he doesn't bring it under control and find balance. I mean, if you think about it, anger really is second to madness. It's just a punishment we give to ourselves for someone else's mistakes. Anyway, we see Casey Jones sitting on his couch watching TV as they report about vigilantes in the city. Casey takes it upon himself to make them pay as he puts his infamous hockey mask on and picks up his set of golf clubs ready to get to his job. As Casey gears up, we see a woman on the streets of the city being harassed by three men. It seems that these men belong to the street gang Purple Dragons. Fortunately enough, it isn't long before Casey shows up ready to put on a good fight and all while Raphael watches the entire showdown until he realizes that Casey is out of control and decides to intervene. He disarms Casey by taking the golf clubs away from Casey's hand. Raphael tries to do the right thing by trying to calm Casey down, letting him know that he saved the woman and scared the men away. But this only angers Casey as he punches Raphael in the face before running after the men yet again. If it wasn't enough, the woman insults Raphael too, 
calling him a lizard-like thing, which only adds salt to his wounds, or maybe chili powder for that matter. Once again, Raphael manages to track Casey down, who is ruthlessly beating those men up, but they manage to escape yet again. Casey has had enough as he now stands up against Raphael, ready to fight. Meanwhile, at the lair, the Ninja Turtles are working and honing their skills blissfully unaware of the trouble Raphael might be in. As Raphael and Casey gear up to fight, Raphael tries his best to explain that while Casey's intentions are right, he's going about it all the wrong way. If there's one thing we know about Casey, it is the fact that he's hot-headed and is in no mood to listen to Raphael, only wanting to fight him for letting those men get away. Back at the lair, the Ninja Turtles find a secret door and head inside to explore when they see a crystal and attempt to find a power source, but instead get locked in. This episode shifts between two scenes, one with the Ninja Turtles and the other with Raphael and Casey. Raphael is trying to teach Casey a thing or two about anger, especially after he almost hurt one of his fellow turtles because of it. If there's anyone who understands Casey's anger, it's Raphael. Casey defends himself by saying that he has his reasons for doing what he does, and Raphael agrees, giving him exactly what Casey needed at that moment a fight. It is short-lived when Raphael peels Casey's mask off, reminding himself and Casey that they are both on the same side. For a moment, the audience and Raphael are convinced that Casey has calmed down and understood that fighting Raphael isn't the way to go, but everyone is soon proven wrong as Casey attacks Raphael again and runs away. We see Casey in this ultimate form for the first time. He's got his mask, golf club, and his infamous bike as he invites Raphael to come and see him on Friday at Central Park before driving away. Meanwhile, purple dragons begin to gear up and plot their revenge against Casey, who has been putting a spanner in their work so far for too long now. Raphael finally returns to the turtle lair, where the rest have managed to return after exploring the secret chamber, which turns out to be an elevator to an abandoned warehouse. Raphael convinces the turtles to help him stop Casey, explaining that he isn't a bad person, but just a little out of control. They all make their way to Central Park, the Turtles, the Purple Dragon, Street Gang, and Casey Jones. However, before they reach the park, Raphael chases Casey down, finally getting him to open up about his past and what led to his being pent up again and his vendetta against the Purple Dragons. When Casey was a young boy, the Purple Dragons shook Casey's father for some protection money, and when Casey's father refused to pay, the gang torched his store, and it is implied that the gang's leader, Hun eventually killed Casey's father, which would explain his intense hatred towards the gang. Casey sheds a tear as he recalls this incident, and we finally see him warm up to Raphael for the first time. Before the two can continue bonding, they are surrounded by the Purple Dragons, but the Ninja Turtles arrive just in time for a showdown of Casey and the Turtles against the Purple Dragons. Once the Purple Dragons are defeated, there begins the story of Casey and Raphael's friendship. Casey's appearance in this series is one of the most interesting and entertaining ones because throughout, we know he's a good guy, but him constantly putting up a fight against Raphael ruffled some feathers. Whoa! They're already infiltrating! They're here! The 2012 revamp, TMNT 2012. The 2012 series doesn't reveal too much about Casey Jones' past or even a lot about him other than the fact that he is a human vigilante, a close friend and ally of the Ninja Turtles and April O'Neil, and is very aware of the existence of mutants, the good ones and the bad ones. Although he isn't a central character in the series, he has some significant appearances throughout the seasons. His debut isn't until season two, when April and the two of them begin talking while also trying to study. This is the first time we see Casey trying to fight off Mutagen Man while trying to save April. Casey lands a few punches in place and manages to escape along with April, both of them unharmed. During the entirety of season two, we see Casey and April bond with each other, while Casey tries his level best to save April from any harm that comes her way, helps the Ninja Turtles fight the villains of the season, and he tries his level best to stay alive. As season three begins, we see Casey training with the Ninja Turtles and April. However, soon enough, while trying to save Raphael, Casey and April end up getting kidnapped by the creep, who is a bog monster-like creature but Leonardo manages to save all of them in the end. While the season is spent with Casey and April helping the Ninja Turtles fight evildoers, there is obviously friction between Donatello and Casey because they both have feelings for April, but that doesn't stop them from helping one another when the time comes. We also see Casey trying to fight big guns like Hun, the new leader of the Purple Dragons, but he doesn't succeed, unfortunately. Moving forward to the fourth season, 
Even though Casey doesn't have a major role in every episode, he is at least present in all of them, contributing to a fight against some of the biggest villains in the series thus far, serving purpose time and again to the Ninja Turtles and April as well. In the fifth season and final season of the series, Casey manages to land himself in the hospital, but is soon discharged as he makes a full recovery. In this season, we witness the netherworld and how Casey helps send spirits back there, and after he bids his final goodbye to Splinter, along with the others, he returns to the afterlife enjoying the sunset. In the episode A Wasteland Warrior, we see an alternate timeline. We see Casey's skull indicating that he died instantly after the mutagen bomb was set off along with all the other humans. This was officially his last appearance in the 2012 series. IDW's takes on the character. IDW's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles micro-series dives into the backstory of Casey Jones, a fellow vigilante. Present-day Casey and Raphael are fighting thugs in a dark alleyway, casually conversing about Casey's high school hockey accomplishments as they take action. Using his signature hockey stick to trip and bash the criminals, Casey goes on to say that he has his grades up playing in the hockey team. He can't tell the coach that he's been busy fighting crime, and that's what keeps him from spending so much time in the library. Casey asks the man and the woman they saved if they can call the cops since Raphael left his phone in his other shell. And the couple simply stands in disbelief, completely shell-shocked, no pun intended. As the infamous duo walks away, Casey jokes about patrolling with Michelangelo next time while the couple decides not to go south of Canal Street the next time around. As we move forward, Casey tells the story how he got started as a hockey player. When he was nine years old, his father took him out to the coldest day of winter and taught him how to play. His father was abusive, throwing pucks at him until he was bruised. It was his cruel way of trying to toughen Casey up. While Casey was freezing, his father kept himself warm with a flask of whiskey. Casey still wears that old hockey mask his father gave him, and it has now become a huge part of his identity. We see the sort of trouble that Casey's father got into, for instance, gambling without the means to pay his debt. Later at night, mobsters show up to collect their dues, but Casey's father never did have the money to pay these men. He offers a gold hockey stick necklace to cover his tab for the moment, but it is not enough, and he's given 48 hours to come up with the remaining money. All this while, Casey watches his miserable father. The necklace belonged to Casey's mother. In a flashback to Casey's high school days, we learn that his mother was sick with cancer and that his father was absent, not showing up for his games. It is rather emotional watching Casey interact with his dying mother, knowing how his father is the complete opposite of her. In the present, Casey's father is watching a hockey game on television, breaking bottles when the team he bet on fails to secure his bet. Casey dons his goalie mask and seeks out Raphael, enlisting his help to keep an eye on mobster Blake Anders and his goons the people who have been threatening his father. They check out a dive bar, Scara Bray, where Blake hangs out and preys on drunks like Casey's father. In another flashback, Casey's mother tells him that his father isn't strong like he is, referring to his descent into alcoholism as he prepares to lose her. She tells him that he will have to take care of his father when she's gone. We return to the present when the televised hockey game is over and Blake is leading another man from the bar, Matthew outside to have his goons beat him up. Raphael and Casey stop them from hurting Matthew by beating them before they can beat him. While the two vigilantes have the mobsters taken down, Casey lets them know both Matthew and Arnold Jones are paid up and Arnold Jones, who is Casey's father, is especially off limits. And Casey can retrieve his mother's necklace back from Blake. Casey returns home and his father demands to know where he's been. And when Casey doesn't give him an answer, Arnold smacks him across the face. Casey hears the promise he made to his mother that he'll let his father feel strong enough, though he's not, but he doesn't know how long he can keep going like this. Casey meets up with the Ninja Turtles, who are shocked to see Casey in a state like that, but he tries his best to keep up a very strong front, acting like everything is okay, knowing he had to do this for his mother as he holds on to her necklace in his hands. This comic that focuses on Casey's origin story is a rather emotional installment in the series as we see the struggles that Casey has been through his entire life and continues to go through because of his father. Appearances in the video games Casey Jones appeared in the 1987 video games. He is a playable character in the NES and Mega Drive versions of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters, which also has an opponent who is a clone of Casey Jones 
and has a very unusual long reach during attacks, which makes him more difficult to win against as compared to other villains in the video games. In the 2003 video games, he is introduced as Arnold Casey Jones Jr. and appears in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Game Boy Advance during Raphael's chapter which adapts the episode Meet Casey Jones from the 2003 remake. He also appears in the games Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3, Mutant Nightmare, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Battle Nexus as a playable character. Moving on to the 2007 video games, Casey plays the role of an ally to the Turtles and is also April's boyfriend, and in the final game sequence, he proposes to April, a scenario that was plotted into the TMNT film but never made it to the final cut. He also appeared in 2012 and 2014 video games as a playable character in both of them. Interesting facts that you should know about Casey. There's no doubt that Casey Jones is one of the most beloved characters in the series, but beyond his persona and charms, there are several interesting things you should know about this character. His hockey stick has Eastman written over it, and his arm protection has the name Laird, which are the names of the Ninja Turtle creators. Somewhere in the beginning, Casey was terrified of Master Splinter when he immediately fainted after their first encounter. This is because Casey has musophobia, which is a fear of mice and rats. In the 2012 series, it is also revealed that Casey has a younger sister, although she is only briefly mentioned, and her name is never revealed. Some facts about Casey Jones that helped us learn more about him are that his favorite color is green, he loves Halloween, and much like the Ninja Turtles, he enjoys his food, especially Mexican and Italian. Apart from the good stuff, there is no denying the fact that originally Casey's character was created as a lunatic with homicidal tendencies who often took things a little too far. In one of the Mirage comic story arcs, he accidentally kills a teenage mugger who can only be seen as the tip of the iceberg. There is no denying that Casey Jones will go down as one of the most loved characters in the history of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles franchise, but the fact remains that there is so much more to the surface than what we see. To understand this character, it is important to understand every interpretation of him in this series. He will always be the most formidable allies of the Ninja Turtles, and his charm will continue to work on April and the viewers as well. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks, everyone. Whoa!